and our meeting tonight is now open for sharing testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. I am very grateful to be a member of this church and for all I have learned here about Christian science. The other night, a few of us watched a documentary by the Longyear Museum about Mary Baker Eddy's time at Chestnut Hill. It brought out that when they moved into Chestnut Hill, Mrs. Eddy told the workers that if she could do anything to make their rooms feel more like home, she would do it. I was very touched by that. As a child, we moved a lot, and I never felt like I had an actual home. As an adult, I came close, but it was nothing that lasted. But once I've come to this church, however, many things came together to help me feel truly at home. Christian science has taught me that our home, our place, is in God. And I am grateful to my practitioner and to the church members for making me feel that sense of home in all ways during my time here. It is wonderful to be here, to have that sense of home, and to also have the purpose and joy that church work brings. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne. Joanne from Florida, go ahead. Um, thank you for those beautiful readings tonight. Um, several years ago, when I was fairly new to Christian science, I was doing some gardening when a bee stung me. It was really painful and immediately began to swell up. Fortunately, the practitioner was nearby, and I was able to ask her for help. I've never forgotten what she told me, which was to love the bee. Well, I did that and started to think about all the good that the bees did in the garden and that they were part of God's love to creation along with me and that we could only bless each other. In a matter of moments, the pain stopped completely, the swelling disappeared, and that was the end of the bee sting, like it had never happened. I'm very grateful for this healing, for the practitioner's help that day, and to be reminded of this healing today. These blessings that we receive in Christian science go on and on and continue to bless us when we need them. I'm so grateful for all the good that Christian science has brought into my life and for membership in this church. Thank you. Thank you. Dave. Dave from Florida. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, many years ago, I had some dental work done, and for some reason when I got home, I was in extreme pain. I called the practitioner for help, she told me to work with Science and Health, page 393, line 18, which says, have no fear that matter can ache, swell, and be inflamed as the result of a law of any kind when it is self-evident that matter can have no pain nor inflammation. It also goes on to say, and I'm paraphrasing this, that the body would not suffer were it not for mortal mind. I would say that within a half an hour, the pain was gone, and I was able to go out to dinner and eat with no recurrence of the pain. I was very grateful for this quick healing. I'm grateful to be a member here for the healing practitioners, for Christian Science, and for those great readings tonight. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Gary. I'm very grateful for the life-changing lessons that I've learned um, in addition to healings um, through Christian science. Um, one of, I've been thinking about one recently, uh, and it relates to, there's a statement in Science and Health which reads, final deliverance from error is not reached through paths of flowers. Well, I grew up attending Sunday school in some Boston affiliated churches. And by the time I arrived here in Plainfield as a young adult, uh, I had the uh, clear perception, <laughs> I thought it was clear, that the purpose, the primary purpose of Christian science was to enable us to live a life 
without problems, without confrontation. In other words, a path of flowers. That's what I believed when I got here. And I had some wonderful healings after I arrived from a fine practitioner. Healings of sickness and career issues and family issues. I knew I had found the correct practice of Christian science when I got here. But in the back of my mind, there was this nagging concern. Why was I having problems? Why was I so uncomfortable in confrontational situations? In other words, what was wrong with me that my life was not a path of flowers? Well, dear Mrs. Evans, fine practitioner and a teacher in this church, provided the answer for me. And I'm so grateful that she did. She taught me first <clears throat> that the primary purpose of Christian science is not to make our lives problem-free. Rather, it is to destroy, and let me repeat that, to destroy the beliefs of sickness and sin for all mankind. And that through our prayers and for standing for what is right, to free us all to be what God made, perfect as God is. And if a problem comes up, well, it's a stepping stone in our spiritual growth. It's to strengthen our understanding that God heals. And that if we take a strong stand for what's right, yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable because the devil does not want to be exposed and destroyed. So get over it. <laughs> <laughs> So facing and overcoming problems each day is, you know, it's not something to be avoided. It's really an essential part of our spiritual growth. Well, it took a while, but once this revelation sank in, it made a huge difference in my life. I no longer condemned myself or got annoyed for experiencing problems. I stopped shying away from confrontational situations. If I felt uncomfortable in them, that was okay because I knew it wasn't me. It was the error that did not want to be destroyed, but was ripe for destruction. I thank God for the help of Mrs. Evans and for other practitioners in his church and for Mrs. Eddy for faithfully giving us this clear and complete explanation of what life is really all about. Thank you, Amanda, for those readings tonight. It's so good to be with you all here tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight, and thank you for the music. Tonight I want to express my gra gratitude for the many lessons that are giving me a growing understanding of how to have God-centered interactions and changing in a positive way my communication with others. This is a, has been through the work of my Plainfield practitioner who has been helping me address issues that I found upsetting and difficult. Also, attending the classes and daily applying what is taught. I also have been using ideas from a teaching testimony on the website titled Presence, Certainty, Position by Mary Beth Singletary. Over the year, I turned to it often to be reminded of ideas that helped me gain poise before challenging interactions. Now I'm finding I'm more mindful of my motives during the communication. I have more awareness of the presence I'm bringing and working on keeping the conversation in heaven. I have been reminded by my practitioner that it is always one child of God talking to another child of God. My thoughts of myself and others are changing from expectations of problems, fearful or limited views, to the truths about man found in the Bible and Mary Baker Eddy's writings, which are based on the Bible. Keeping the conversation in heaven reminds me to pray 
dur both before, during, and after, whether it's texting, calls, emails, or in-person interactions. The other day, what could have been a problematic call was instead carefully and kindly solved, and at the end I was led to express my appreciation to the person that helped me. The individual was so joyous to receive the kind words and said that it was just what they needed to hear at that moment. I felt the call had been given to both of us from God. I'm very grateful for our God, Christ Jesus, Mary Baker already, and the Plainfield Christian Science Independent Church. Thank you. Yeah, this is Bruce. I'd like to add my thanks tonight because there's so much that I have to be thankful for coming to the Plainfield Church and learning about Christian science and getting many, many benefits from it. I'd like to point out a passage that's in our lesson this for this week from Romans where Paul says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. This is a passage we've had many times in our lesson throughout the years, and it's always been so helpful and inspiring, but it calls to mind one specific time a number of years ago when it seemed like everything I did put me in an, an apologetic situation. I found myself feeling almost apologetic for everything that I said and did. And then I realized there's no need for this because, you know, I came here to Plainfield to learn about Christian science, to learn about Mary Baker Eddy, what she did and what she gave the world. And even though I had to agree there's so much that I have yet to learn, and I still do today, but that doesn't mean that I have to be pushed into an apologetic situation, but rather, I'm in, like Paul said, there is no condemnation. Because I was walking a path where I was going after the Spirit. There's nothing wrong with that. So, also I just realized that when Paul wrote this, this was not just a mere suggestion. It was a strong statement of absolute truth. In other words, it laid down the law that there is no condemnation, that there is a law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus that made me free from any law of sin or death. Well, I remember that time a number of years ago when I thought along these terms, I felt my strength coming back immensely and confidence, confidence in good, not confidence in me personally or individually, but confidence in Almighty God and me as his humble servant. And even though I may have much to learn, and I still do, like I said before, I still have the confidence of going forward step by step with God, willing to learn whatever it is I need to learn, and shedding this sense of condemnation, which is ungodlike. Chardell. Thank you for the readings tonight and for our music. I am grateful for the weekly lessons at Plainfield and the roundtables. The lesson this week is called Life. As I was thinking about how grateful I am to begin somewhat to understand this life, my life with God, the only life there is, enables me to leave behind or drop at least some of my worldly beliefs. This thought process brought me to something that was said at the last round table about forsaking all worldliness. It's a quote. I don't want to be judged by world standards. Why? Because they change every day, every year, and they are meaningless to God. End quote. Some time ago, after I made my covenant with God, as so wisely taught here, it seemed only right to change my thinking 
about what is really true about me. It is like connecting the dots to make a clear, real picture. I am so grateful for everything taught here that makes it possible to grow in God's grace. Thank you. Thank you. Craig. I'd like to thank Amanda for the readings in the Lord's Prayer and the music that we so inspiring. It sets a tone for the, the love that's here and is here every every service. I'm a, I found that God gave me probably the most challenging job I've had as a parent. And I thank him for the Lord's Prayer and to be taught how to pray here. To get to, to, to have me do what is right as a parent and to, to be the loving shepherd and to love and correct. As um, so I, I think from the lessons we could indicates, again, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who often not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Well, I... Uh, I was trying to be the best parent I could, and I sometimes, uh, well, I definitely have to pray, and and I did pray, but it's a question of getting here to be, of being the the strong parent and not being too emotional in my case. And this time, I think I was too emotional, and it set me off on a path of not having my peace afterwards. So I, I, in taking my wife to the supermarket, I parking, I bumped, cracked a lady's taillight, which I had never done before. And I could have just run away, said sorry, without doing anything, but I knew God would want me to stay there to love her and to take responsibility for what I had done and trust him. So I did. And I stayed there and eventually she came back and I said, this is who I am and I will pay for it. And I did. She found the price and a person to fix it, and I did. But when I said that to her, I felt so much that I didn't know how God was going to make things right. First, he gave my peace back. And I had talked to our practitioner, Prairie Prior, about the whole situation. Not just that car situation, but about my home, being a good parent. And I got my peace back immediately. And then I got my him, him 49, on clothe, <clears throat> that uh, dear Lord and Father clothe me in my rightful mind. And I sang it, and I sang it, and I sang it. Anyway, the beauty thing is, if you just trust God, even if you don't know how it's going to work, you're going to get everything you need to be the person that he made and to be effective and Home life has been better since then I've been less emotional and more just strong, I think, light and example. And uh, I trust that everything will work out just fine. But it is the prayer, to have enough courage to pray instead of just doing. To go to God and, and say, God, what should I do? And then uh, trust that it, you'll know. And he does. He always tells us. And it always works. Thank God for Mary Baker Radio. Thank you. Kara from New Mexico. Go ahead. Thank you so much for those fantastic readings about the Lord's Prayer. Um, this morning, I, I woke up thinking about the way Mrs. Eddy uses the word exciting. She refers more than once to the exciting cause of disease or suffering. Now, in our current understanding of this word, most people wouldn't be too excited about either disease or suffering. But in the 19th century, it turns out the word exciting meant causing disease, because to excite meant to move, stir up, rouse, call out, summon forth. So I began thinking, what, is, according to Mrs. Eddy, stirs up and rouses and calls out and summons forth disease and suffering? More to mind, she says meaning the mentality that we are each separate mortals born and then living until we die. And what is the remedy? Understanding that there is never anything except the infinite manifestation of the infinite mind. Well, 
earlier this week, I experienced suffering from what might have been called in Mrs. Eddy's day, sick headache. And sometimes it felt really hard to hold to the truth, so I had to keep it simple. I worked with God is all, God is good, good is all, and, and that was really helping. And by late evening, I felt ready to eat something. So I put a baking potato in the microwave. Now, I rarely use microwaves, which became evident when I set the entire potato on fire. I mean, like flames and smoke. (laughs) Talk about exciting. Well, what happened was it reminded me of an old article called The Smell of Fire, which I loved by Louise Knight Knight Wheatley. And so um, once the excitement died down, I reread it. And It's about the three men in the Bible who are bound up and thrown into the fiery furnace by a king who demands they give up their belief in God. But instead of dying, of course, the three of them walk around in the flames, joined by a fourth figure who is pure light. The king is so amazed that he pulls them out, only to find that they are not even slightly singed, unlike my poor potato. And unlike my apartment, there was no smell of fire on them. Well, it turned out that this exciting event had something to teach me. And the first was this, which I read in the article. Let us refuse to allow error to attach itself to us in any way, shape, or manner. It's claimed that it once had activity, presence, power, or law is a false and spurious claim and should be seen and handled only as its last desperate effort, since all else has failed, to get itself perpetuated as a belief of memory. I saw that I'd been giving this seemingly chronic condition of sick headache ongoing reality by remembering it having happened before. The writer says there are two ways that these kinds of memories seem to stick, through self-pity or self-condemnation, or both. And she tells us to break this mesmerism by refusing to accept any argument that perpetuates a belief in a material past And I love this. To hold a post-mortem over error is tacitly to admit that it once had life. And that just helped me so much. But it was the last part of the article that really brought everything home for me. She says that Mrs. Eddy wrote that only those who were tried in the furnace reflect the image of their father. Well, suddenly my incendiary potato took on a whole new light. Because the king pulled the three men out when he realized that that fourth figure was the Son of God. And the author says, that heavenly glimpse of divine reality, that clear realization of man as he really is, the Son of God, is not so often gained in our hours of ease as in those testing times when the utmost efforts of animal magnetism seem put forth to destroy the Christ idea for which we stand. So let us rejoice, even if it were through great tribulation, that we gained the vision. (laughs) Well, it all turned out that my exciting evening of lighting a potato on fire happened to show me that the exciting cause of disease and suffering is always a belief held in thought, and that when dis-ease is summoned or called forth, it is God who is doing summoning the lies so that we can recognize them as untrue and let them disappear back into their native nothingness. Because no matter how hard animal magnetism works to destroy the Christ idea, it can't. Because animal magnetism is nothing, and God is all. And that's what I've been learning here at Plainfield through the practice of Christian science and while working with my practitioner. And I can truly say that this learning and practice is always exciting. Thank you. Ingrid. Ingrid from California. Go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the readings, and thank you for all of your great work, and especially for that amazing website. Thank you so much. I would like to express my gratitude for all what I have learned through the decades with this amazing science of the Christ, never failing, and would like to share something that happened when I was uh, crossing a river back, 
And it wasn't a huge river or anything. We knew it was something safe. We could just walk through uh, logs and stones. Uh, But on the way back, one of the logs moved out a little bit too much, and I ended up falling into the river. And I fell on my back. And someone gave me a hand uh, very quick, and I just got up. But when I finished crossing the river, I realized that my phone was in the back pocket. And I'm like, well, my phone. I took it out, and I just, by the time I, I, I took it out, I already was praying about wonderful things that I have learned and wonderful testimonies that I have heard about any electronic, any car, anything, just uh, being completely brought to its perfection by knowing that it's also a perfect idea of God and as God's creation cannot be changed. And I was going through all these wonderful divine inspirations and um, a, a few minutes later, the the phone turned on. But the camera, we were still at this beautiful outdoor place with rivers and mountains. And so I wanted to take pictures. And then I realized that the camera wasn't working at all. It was, I couldn't even see a picture, anything. It was just all white. So I just kept on praying. And when, after we left, um, someone told me there was a mall and maybe they could help me there. I didn't want to wait that long in case that there was really some water or whatever. I guess they owed our little faith. But I still was praying and I still was knowing mainly that God is always in control. And, and just keeping uh, declaring that God's creation cannot be changed. Ever. And, uh, but the camera wasn't doing anything. So I went to the mall and the guy at the phone store said, oh, no, your camera got all, all bad. We have to replace it. And then he told me, you know, a couple of hundred dollars to replace it. And I just said, okay, thank you. I will just wait. And the wait, when I said wait, I knew, hey, Get down to what you know because you have plenty of absolute spiritual uh, inspirations to to uh, just declare and, and know. And so I did that. I was kind of busy because I, I was the driver and, you know, all this stuff. So I had to take care of things. But I was still holding um, just all these wonderful spiritual truths. And uh, by the time I got to my destination, the camera was working perfectly. I could see again all my pictures. And till today, um, you know, just using that phone and the camera. So I'm so grateful that it doesn't matter what it is, who it is, what it seems to be, when we declare the absolute spiritual truth that can never change and will never change. It always just bring everything as it should be and all the perfection and this is as we know for any person and any uh, sickness and any virus stuff whatever it is is nothing to divine mind and divine law because it's always in control so very grateful for these wonderful teachings and for all the people that help for them to be out in the world like you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dale. Dale from Virginia, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for those excellent readings. When it was read from Acts chapter 3, ye are the pro- children of the prophets and of the covenant which God gave, which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. It reminded me of Saturday's Bible study, where we talked about the commandments, statutes, and judgments which God gave, and for us to teach to our children. 
to keep them on our mind and upon our hand so that they would direct Mm -hmm. our action. I'm grateful that in this independent church, we are taught to memorize Bible verses or statements of truth from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. With these truths readily at hand, we always have a source of comfort and power to declare in any situation. Many, Many times I've experienced very quick healings or protection when immediately declaring some truth I've made my own. And it is a comfort to know, as we read in Jeremiah chapter 31, that God made this covenant with the house of Israel. Quote, I will put my law in their inward parts <clears throat> and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. They shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. End quote. In the glossary of science and health, part of the definition of children of Israel is, quote, Christ's offspring, end quote. So God made a covenant not with a race of people, but all who turn to God, spirit, with all their heart and mind and strength and soul. I am so grateful to know about our covenant with God and and with these readings tonight that we are all united as children of our Father, Mother, God. Thank you very much for this service. Thank you. Debbie. Debbie from Illinois. Go ahead. Thank you. Today I was led once again um, to study the article Body by Mary Baker Eddy. An excerpt from the article is as follows. Quote, Stop thinking about the body or trying to picture it as perfect from your standpoint. Our highest perception of the body today is far short of what body really is. Stop tinkering with it mentally. Loose it and let it go. Just know that it is God's body and that God is this moment and every moment forming it or bringing it forth according to his word, his divine idea. Jesus recognized Lazarus as an undying manifestation of God. You are that undying and perfect manifestation of God, end quote. I'm very grateful for this truth of my body, and I'm eagerly putting it into practice, and know that this truth will allow me to be freed from all beliefs of pain, lack, and disease in my body. Thank you very much. Thank you. Day Day from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm thankful for Christian science and the learning experience that I'm having, which is proving to me over and over again that there truly is an answer to every problem and a permanent healing awaiting every ill. This understanding gives me endless comfort and the confidence needed to continue in prayer when something is worrying or disturbing me. I no longer have the desire or ability to hide from fears or even pain resulting in anger discouragement, or resentment. Rather, I've learned the necessity of staying in constant prayer for clarity on what God is telling me and obedience to how he is directing me. I'm thankful that God, my ever-present provider and protector, is always teaching me what I need to know to improve not only my experience, but my entire life. And I'm grateful for the blessings that come from each new lesson. Thank you so much for tonight's readings and for all the testimonies. Thank you. Someone's calling from area code 704. 728. Uh, Please announce yourself and go ahead with your testimony. Hi, this is Sandy. This is at Area Cove, North Carolina. I just want to express my gratitude 
so you run tables. Um, every every time I just so amazed about the these divine ideas, the the independent Christian Scientist Church in New Jersey had come up with all these illumined ideas about your website. I have a daughter, her name is Angelica, she grew learning about Christian science. Um, she woke up apart a little bit, and um, and my son, too, uh, be going to law school. I've been sending the round tables without interfering or, inf- or trying to influence them too much. As I hear or, or listen to the round table with uh, Mary Beth in and, and, and Florence, if I hear something, I say, well, let me share that with my kids. If my daughter was searching for a job in a law firm, um, she was worried. I said, listen to the round table and do the Lord prayer and, and do the, this Bible lesson. And especially we like at the end of every Bible lesson, the ammunition, the or duties, the Meribe Kereri has said, in the beginning, we would listen to it without taking it in. But as we take it in, it's our duty, the things that we have to do, and don't let us to get influenced erroneously. So anyway, I keep sending to my children. My daughter ended up having this wonderful job. She got hired because she knows the understanding of the science. And she said, Mom, thank you for keep forwarding to me all these things for a Christian scientist independence. And my son today is worried about what law school he should select. It. He said, Mom, thank you for the treatment. I said, Son, don't take me. Take Christian scientist independence on New Jersey in the round tables. And, and, and pray for them because this church is really, it's just wonderful. I just so grateful for you guys. I'm looking forward for the day that I can fly to New Jersey to visit the church in person. I'm so grateful for every article, for every writing, for every time that you take to, of your personal life to teach this wonderful teaching the right way, the way that Miss Mary Baker did in the intended. I'm so grateful to be a child of God. I'm grateful for so many blessings to be safe, to know that all things work together for good. If we look at to the Christ consciousness, thank you for your readings tonight. Thank you. And we also are looking forward to that day when you come here to visit us. Florence from Georgia. Go ahead. Thank you. And thank you, Amanda, for the beautiful readings on the Lord's Prayer. I'm so grateful for Mary Baker Eddy through God's message and Christ Jesus and how they lived their examples for us to follow. One of them is praying unceasingly and particularly praying before our meals. I'm giving this testimony because I hear a lot of food in being an affliction, meal times, which should be a, a time of gratitude and happiness, has become a time of anxiety and painful afterwards for many people. And I just am so grateful that through science we see that this is just one more way that modern mind will keep us slaves, to be afraid of eating. And I'm just so grateful that the Lord's Prayer is one of those simple but preventative steps we can take every time we, all, we eat. I know what this lie does. It will start, you know, making you afraid of eating something. And so you eliminate that. And then the next thing. And then the next thing. And so I'm so grateful that in our blue book as well, Mrs. Seddy gives us something which is very simple, but can be used in conjunction or as an alternative to using the Lord's Prayer. It's on page 195 of the Blue Book. It says, before each meal, deny the existence of any power or intelligence 
that can interfere with our conscious oneness with God. I find that so beautifully said and just so powerful. And I, I say, anyone who is being tempted with this lie, please use what we've been given. Have faith in it. It works. We do not have to be afraid of food, something so good, nourishment from our father, mother, and we can stand our ground with the Lord's Prayer or the simple prayer in the Blue Book. I am so grateful to be here, to hear all the testimonies that tell us that indeed there is a father, mother, God always present, and we can turn to him and have our relief. I'm so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you.